Walter White entered the criminal underworld as a desperate dying man who just wanted to leave his family off well before his departure. But he quickly became addicted to the power and thrill of being a kingpin and is sucked into the empire business. Yet you would expect a Caltech wizard who has contributed to a Nobel Prize and even had a multi-billion dollar company built off his research to have been better with his money in the first place. As Albert Einstein said, the most powerful force in the world isn't the speed of light, dark matter or black holes, but compounding interest. So here's how much money Walter White would have had if he had just invested his money. Starting off, we know that Walter White lives a pretty frugal life. Walter and Skyler both drive pretty old cars, and they live in what they thought would just be their starter home. They don't spend money on anything that seems lavish or unnecessary, so it's likely that Walter White was actually saving and investing. But of course, that wouldn't make for an interesting story. Let's first take a look at the most accessible investment option for Walter White. For most Americans, this would be a 401k or a Roth IRA. But since Walter is a teacher and thus a government employee, the easiest investment tool available to him would be a 403b plan. And yes, this is offered by Albuquerque Public Schools. This is basically a 401k plan for teachers where money will be deducted every month straight from their paycheck tax-free and invested for them. The only difference is that 401k plans are generally more efficient and have lower fees than 403b plans. Before we get into the numbers, let's set up some base assumptions. We know that Walter left Grey Matter in the early 1980s and that he won the Nobel Prize recognition in 1985. When they were house shopping, we can see that Skylar was pregnant with Walter Jr. and that Walter was working for Sandia Laboratories. So it's likely that he became a teacher in the 1990s. In the show, he gets fired in 2009 and dies in September of 2010. But if he didn't turn to the dark side, he wouldn't have gotten fired and his death would have been significantly delayed. We know that he had significant remission and it's likely that without all the stress and danger of the criminal world and without ghetto chemotherapy for 6 months, he would have lived a good amount longer. So we'll say that under normal circumstances, he wouldn't have died till September of 2012. Assuming that he started working at Sandia Laboratories in 1987, this means that he would have had right about 25 years of working time. On top of this, it's very likely that he made more at Sandia Laboratories than he does as a teacher, but we'll assume he only made his teacher salary of $43,700 a year the entire time. The general rule for retirement contribution is 10% of one's gross salary, so we'll say that Walter puts in $4,370 per year. Now, during those exact 25 years, the S&P 500, or what is regarded as the market, grew on average 8.603% per year with dividends reinvested. Even if Walter's 403b plan didn't match the market and only got 7% yearly returns and charged a very high 1.5% yearly fee, Walter would get 5.5% growth every single year. At this rate, Walter would only contribute $109,250 over 25 years, but his investment would actually be worth over double that at $223,000 by the end. And that's the very minimum. He would have $223,000 if he was completely ignorant to everything and just mindlessly contributed 10% per year. Now, a significant benefit of using employer-provided investment platforms is that they often have employer match, meaning that they'll contribute up to a certain amount. This is generally up to 10% of one's total income. So in Walter's case, employer match would provide up to another $4,370 per year. Assuming that Walter's school district contributes 50 cents for every dollar Walter contributes, with Walter contributing $4,370 per year, the school district would contribute $2,185 per year, adding to a total of $6,555 per year. Using the same time span and growth as before, with employer match, Walter would have a solid $335,000. But what if Walter contributed more than 10%? Walter doesn't make too much to start with, so he can't be contributing 40-50% to of his salary. 
But we know that Skylar worked at Beneke Fabricators at one point, and Walter worked at a car wash as a side job. So, it's possible that he was able to contribute a solid 20% of his teacher's salary per year, taking full advantage of the employer match. Now, that's the highest we'll go, as anything higher would require insane frugality and or would be unrealistic. But 10-20% to contribution is quite reasonable. If Walter invested $8,740 per year with no employer match, he'd be left with $447,000. But if he also had employer match, this amount would balloon up to $670,000, nearly the $737,000 he originally wanted. So, by just taking advantage of employer retirement plans, Walter would have $223,000 to $670,000, an exponential improvement from the laughable $8,700 he actually had as life savings after nearly a lifetime of work. We'll say he had in between those estimates at $500,000. Now, of course, he still has to pay for all the cancer treatment, which would significantly reduce his family's inheritance. According to Walter's calculations, it would cost $360,000 for two kids' college education, $107,000 to pay off the house, and $30K for the equity line. On top of this, he wants to leave behind $2K per month for 10 years. Starting off with his hospital bills, usually, most hospitals are actually very understanding of financial hardship and offer a loan reduction and or no interest payments. But we'll assume that Walter would classify these as handouts and charity and that he is determined to pay off the full amount. We know Walter's surgery costs $170,000 and that his chemotherapy costs tens of thousands. So we'll call his total medical bill $300,000. As for the house payments, the $30,000 equity line and $107,000 mortgage balance would cost $137,000 total. Now, Walter usually wouldn't be able to withdraw from his 403B till he is 59 and a half years old. But Walter would more than qualify for a financial hardship withdrawal. The qualified circumstances for early withdrawal without penalties are large medical bills, a down payment on a primary residence, higher education tuition fees, and eviction slash foreclosure. Furthermore, Medical bills are tax deductible above 7.5% of one's adjusted gross income. With Walter's salary, everything above $3,278 would be tax deductible, or basically 99% of the entire medical bill. This would leave Walter with $200,000 in his retirement account, which would be more than enough for the $137,000 mortgage balance and equity line. However, this 200k would be subject to income tax, which comes out to a hefty $61,475. But Walter would have just enough to pay both of these off, and he would have about $1,500 left. As for Walter Jr. and Holly's educations, let's be honest here. If he hadn't gotten cancer or gotten involved in a drug business, he wouldn't have contributed much to their education working as a high school chemistry teacher with $8,700 in savings anyways. One thing to consider, however, is that if Walter didn't get into the drug business, he may have stuck with his original decision to not get cancer treatment. And this would allow him to leave behind a solid $300,000, growing at 5.5%. So even if Walter was just a mediocre investor relying on his 403B or the S&P 500, he would have been able to leave his family off with no liabilities and $300,000 by rejecting medical treatment. Not bad, but what if Walter was a genius investor, just like he was a genius chemist? Well, assuming he contributed 20% of his salary towards investing every year, he'd be able to invest $8,740 per year. An above average return on investment would be 10% per year, and this is realistically what Walter would hope for. At a 10% ROI, he would have $859,000 at the time of his death. Ideally, you would liquidate these positions over several years in order to reduce capital gains taxes. But even if Walter liquidated the entire amount in one year, he would retain 80% of his investment, leaving him with $687,000. This would be enough to pay for his entire medical treatment and home liabilities, and he would have $250,000 left. Walter estimates that Walter Jr. and Holly's education will cost $360,000. But instead of being $180,000 each, it's likely $150,000 for Walter Jr. and $210,000 for Holly due to inflation. After paying for Walter Jr.'s education as well as all of his liabilities and medical bills, 
Walter could leave behind $100,000 for Skylar. Ideally, Skylar would invest this into a safe index fund after Walter's death and get a job herself to cover monthly living expenses. Considering that Holly was born in between late 2008 and early 2009, she would go to college in 2027, meaning that there would be 15 years of growth before she needs the money. At a modest 7% rate, Walt's $100,000 would have grown to $275,000. After taxes, this would be exactly enough for Holly's education. So, if Walter invested his money and got above average returns of 10%, he could have covered all the big expenses in his family's life. Skylar would simply have to take care of monthly living expenses like food, utilities, repairs, and so on and so forth. So, those are the realistic outcomes, but now, let's take a brief look at if he was an exceptional investor. If he got 15% yearly returns, this would grow to a total of $1.859 million after 25 years, which would be enough to cover everything plus have roughly a million dollars left. And lastly, if Walter was a world-renowned investor, he could get returns of 20.5% per year, which is what Warren Buffett has maintained since 1965. This route would leave Walter with a nice $4.47 million. Something to keep in mind is that this is all off of a $43,700 salary. Walter graduated from Caltech, where the median starting salary itself is roughly $25,000 more than Walter's final salary. The median mid-career salary at Caltech is $124,000, and considering Walter's additional qualifications, he likely could have landed a job paying $150,000 in the chemistry field. Given the higher salary, he could easily afford to put a higher proportion of his income towards investing. If he put 33% towards investments or 50k per year, even at an average 7% yearly return, he would have had $3.16 million. And with Warren Buffett level returns, he could have had $25.5 million. He likely wouldn't have gotten that high, but with a nice paying lap job and good investing habits, Walter could have quite reasonably pushed upwards of 5 to 10 million by the time he died, completely legally. And by the time Skylar dies, she could pass down about 30 million dollars just investing in index funds. Considering that Walt was only able to pass down 10 million after risking his life several times, nationally shaming his entire family, and dying alone, it definitely seems like Walter was in the wrong empire business. But that's just what I think. What do you guys think Walter should have done? Comment that down below. Also, if you guys like the depth of this analysis, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.